The legislation does not specify liability of breaches in the leasing process of state-owned objects. A draft law addressing this gap was reviewed during the plenary session of the Legislative Chamber. It aims to strengthen accountability for violations related to the lease of the state property. During the discussions, it was reported that in 2022, there were 595 cases registered related to the violation of the order of execution and acquisition of state property. This figure decreased slightly to 581 cases in 2023. Additionally, the meeting provided information on the most common situations concerning the leasing of state property. The most common violations of the law in renting out state property include understating the parameters and quantity of the leased property in the lease agreement, leasing state property through auctions without following the established procedure for lease agreement conclusion, and abstracting access and use of leased state property. Key rights against the lessee include acceptance of the leased state property, access to its premises, and its proper utilization. The proposed draft law establishes administrative liability for failing to adhere to the leasing procedure for state property, neglecting to implement measures for the efficient utilization of unoccupied state property, and violating the rights of entrepreneurs and other individuals leasing state-owned property. This draft law proposes to impose fines on officials ranging from five to ten times the basic calculation and on citizens from three to five times for violating the procedure for leasing state property. The adoption of this draft law aims to ensure the effective use of state property and safeguard the legal interests of both business entities leasing state property and their freedom. In addition, if officials repeatedly commit these violations within a year, they will be fined 15 to 20 times the base calculation amount. After discussions, the draft law was adopted regarding this. During the plenary session of the Legislative Chamber, a draft law aimed at enhancing the water resources management system was discussed. According to proposed legislation, payments for water supply services to agricultural product producers are to be eliminated. Water irrigation departments and special services previously provided water to consumers and charged for their services. Additionally, farms have been taxed for water usage. Now a state water supply institution is being established based on these departments and services, and service fees are being eliminated. In the future, this institution will engage in producing guidelines for repairing and restoring internal water supply networks up to the point of consumption. Currently, 40% of the taxes paid by consumers for water usage are designated for the development of the state water supply institution. In addition, district and city councils of people's deputies have been granted the authority to establish the limit for water intake by consumers for agricultural purposes. The draft law was approved during the plenary session.